Hello everyone. Welcome to Plant Science Simplified by Ganesh Shandi. In this particular video, I will be dealing with the topic called How Plants Absorb Water. The definition of water absorption take, goes like this. The uptake of water by the plants is called as water absorption. So basically water will be present in the soil and from the soil water should reach to the inside the plant and this particular mechanism is especially called as absorption and where inside exactly the xylem of the plant and through the xylem since xylem is a conducting tissue which is present all over the plant it reaches to the other areas like up to the leaves where it gets evaporated or it gets transpired from the leaves in the by the process of transpiration so this particular mechanism this particular process is called as water absorption when we study the movement of water since it is a unidirectional in nature so it starts from the soil soil will have water molecules which are present between their soil particles and it should move into the roots thereby and it should cross the different tissues which are present inside the root and it should reach the xylem so what are the tissues how the root architect is that is what we are going to see now so basically root this is the cross section of the root and it can be mainly divided into three regions namely epidermis or epiblema cortical region and the stellar region and stellar region is composed of phloem and xylem with the pericycle and outermost region of the cortical cell is called as endodermis and these are all the cortical cells which are uh, arranged in a very proper manner and these are the barrel shaped cells which are called as epiblema cells and root hairs are the extensions of the epiblema cells which absorb which gives more surface area for the water absorption to the plant and this movement of water from the soil to the xylem is a proper channel of water absorption path. So this is a schematic representation how the water will enter and this mechanism involves two processes basically. A represents a poroplastic movement and B represents sorry a represents symplastic movement and B represents apoplastic movement. Symplastic movement refers to the movement of water through the leaving contents of the root whereas apoplastic movement refers to the movement of water from the soil to the xylem through the non-leaving contents of the root. So to understand the mechanism of water absorption, basically it has been proposed by Kramer in 1949 that there can be two mechanisms to understand the water absorption and they are passive absorption and active absorption. What are these mechanisms? How they differ? This is what we are going to study right now. When it comes to the active absorption of water, there are certain characteristics for the active absorption. Then only we can call that particular type of absorption as the active absorption and they are the roots absorb water by their own efforts. So it is not something is taking water through the roots, but it is the roots which are involved themselves. So when they involve themselves 
usually this kind of uh, absorption will takes place when the transpiration is low and water level of the soil is high that means during highly irrigated cool conditions or rainy seasons is the ideal situations for active absorption to take place and here very importantly metabolic energy released through respiration is consumed by the plant to uptake the water and that's why it is called as active absorption and there are two theories within the active absorption of water to explain this particular mechanisms and they are active osmotic absorption of water and active non osmotic absorption of water and we will be looking into both the theories one by one let us consider active osmotic absorption of water at the beginning so as we know the pathway of the water basically here what we have to focus is we should be aware about the concept of water potential and the physical concepts like osmosis diffusion if you have an idea about these particular aspects we can understand these theories very easily and if you want to understand more knowledge about those theories please watch my earlier videos which are already available in my channel okay so pathway of absorption of water goes like this soil water which are root hairs will take the soil water and from there cortical cells are there and endoderm is is present so this will create a pathway for the water movement so here what happens basically if we understand the different mechanisms basically solute content usually in the root hairs will be more compared to the soil water and to manage the contents water content will be less in root hairs and water content will be more in soil water as a result of that what happens the solute potential of the root hairs will be more and it will be less in this particular scenario so as a result definitely water should enter into the root hairs from the soil right so over a period of time what happens the water will enter into the root hair cells as a result there will be less solute potential and more water content will be there it is better to focus on the water content here earlier there was less water content in the root hair cells and more solute potential but due to the solute potential increased solute potential in the root hairs the water was able to come inside here what happens now due to the availability of more and more amount of water the pressure potential will come into picture so since there is a continuous supply of water through the increased solute potential and water channels the potential pressure potential will increase in the root hairs as a result what happens the they starts bulging or they starts uh, increasing their size but this will be delimited due to the presence of cell walls as a result of that the water starts moving comparing to the other cortical cells now they will have less pressure potential and less solute potential as a result the water starts moving from the root hair cells to the cortical cells and from there 
cortical cells. So there will be a continuous gradient of osmotic gradient will be created. And now both the forces pressure potential as well as solute potential will place a role together and as a result what happens the two in total as we know that water potential is a cumulative process of pressure potential solute potential and matrix potential so as a result of that there will be a gradient in the solute content and water content so water will move from the soil to the endodermal regions so active osmotic absorption of water takes place due to the water potential differences in the different regions of the roots. So this is basically we have to understand what active osmotic absorption of water refers to. Then when we consider about active non-osmotic absorption of water, this takes place against the osmotic gradient that means contrary to the active absorption there won't be a osmotic gradient which is naturally getting produced instead of that the root hair cells should use more and more metabolic energy to create more solute potential or pressure potential so that they can imbibe or they can take water inside them. So this is how the against osmotic gradient and the energy should come from the respiration. So non-osmotic absorption requires the expenditure of metabolic energy which comes through respiration. How we will know that? So because by understanding the three very important mechanisms, we could able to decipher that it comes through the metabolic energy. The factors which inhibit respiration also decrease water absorption. And poisons which retard metabolic activities of the root cells also retard water absorption. And auxins which increase metabolic activities of the cells stimulate absorption of water. That means all these are work in a synchronous manner. So this is how non-osmotic absorption of water takes place. So this is the gist of active and non or active osmotic absorption and active non-osmotic absorption of water. Next we will be studying about the passive absorption of water. So passive absorption of water can be given as an analogy to the lighting lamp, lampion which is used or spirit lamp which we use in our labs. So what happens actually this spirit or oil will be inside this particular content and flame will be lightened up in the above region. Since flame has to, uh, flame will be there, it is because of the continuous supply of the oil or spirit through the wick. That's why the flame will be burning. If you turn off the flame, the absorption or the movement of the oil doesn't take place. So in the same way, passive absorption theory tells that there is a process of transpiration in plants. And 70% of the plant body is made up of water and majority of the water, whatever it is concerned, it will be there in the xylem columns, continuous xylem columns and more details about the transpiration and xylem columns, all these things which we will be studying in the 
ascent of sap and transpiration in the further videos and soil water will be there in the ground right so since transpiration keeps on removing water from the plant to maintain the water level of the plant it needs continuous input from the soil and as a result of that water will be absorbed this is what passive absorption of water refers to that means in the passive absorption root hair cells do not play any active role they are just passive they are just structural entities which are there for the absorption of water here transpiration plays a very important role and it causes up to 95% of the absorption of water and high rate of transpiration causes more passive absorption of water so this is with respect to the passive absorption of water let us compare both active and passive absorption of water through this particular slide in the active absorption it is due to the activity of root hairs and it takes place due to the osmotic and non osmotic mechanisms and absorption involves symplast movement and the theories which gives the evidence for this are root pressure bleeding and gutation whereas for the passive absorption it takes place due to the activities of shoot and leaves and it is the active transpiration in the upper parts makes absorption of water below the ground and water moves through the apoplast of the root and evidence for this particular theory is a removal of root doesn't stop absorption and with this i hope this particular lecture was useful to you and if you like my videos kindly subscribe and press like button and i'll come with more and more videos for you thank you for listening